<laughs> okay, so welcome to um, this week's video. Um, I'm doing another teaching one, so I hope you really enjoy it. So basically this week I'm going to be teaching about um, art making skills and how to teach that in the classroom. Um, I read um, a journal article called, I read an article called Making Art. Um, it, was writ it was written by a various number of teachers um, who teach art and uh, multimedia and photography in their schools um, for the Teaching Arts Journal. And it states as an opening statement, as both teachers and artists, we are required to be cognizant in our, uh, in our own art making process, both how it works and why it is important to us, in order to make this process visible to our students. The statement is like very appropriate. <laughs> the statement is one that is very important, especially in the visual arts classroom. Um, it's relevant to most visual arts. You usually get asked by students why why is art relevant in today's world? How is it relevant in today's world? In this teaching um, artist journal, the various authors um, shared stories on how personal artistic creativity can, can thoroughly influence a classroom art making experience. <laughs> Johnson begins with her clear account of um, how she went about it in her school. She writes, As I am the last person in my family who sews, I feel a sense of duty to pass it down to whoever I can. So when the teaching artists in the Grenner Family Learning Centre were asked to teach something from their own personal art form, I jumped at the chance to work with hand sewing needles. In many ways, visual arts is often seen as um, craft or um, traditions and and that is the most fascinating part of art. It's a chance for us teachers to hand down generations upon generations of knowledge about skills, about like skills just like old school, like, even at, like sewing, that's still art, you can still count that as art. The skills like that consist like for screen printing for example, it's like an ancient skill. And it's like an opportunity for us to teach our students traditions um, from a gone by generation. Um, these skills can consist from screen printing to of course sewing, um, as seen in that previous example. Not all the time it's the easiest thing to do, um, especially with needles. A lot of kids are very wary about, well not kids, but a lot of students are really wary about like poking themselves, they want to get it right, you know, I don't want to get ink on myself or oh, I don't want to paint all over me or, you know, um, even in the dark room when you're doing photography, it's still so important to get that right. Um, not so important, but like students don't want to mess up. They don't want to like do the wrong thing, you know what I mean? Um, it's, it's in our nature. However, when teaching stage six visual arts, um, this shouldn't be an issue um, because the students are there because they want to be there. They don't want, they're not forced there. Um, it's not like grade six, grade, you know, grade six, what am I saying? You know what I mean? Like all those younger grades, like grade eight, as soon as you're into high school, you have to do visual arts. It's one of those core subjects you have to do, you've got to do. Maths, English, History, Visual Arts. There's a lot of subjects that if it's forced upon you. But in stage six, it's year 11 and 12, things are a little bit serious. Not a little bit serious, they're quite serious. But um, it's way more important and you know, they understand that they're here to learn and, and they really get into it. Um, <clears throat> Johnson said that she was focusing on the aspect of confidence and perseverance. Um, trying to get her, stu her students to understand that yes, you can do it. Um, cross stitching, sewing, it's not that hard. Um, get that confidence in them and so they can believe that they can do it. 
She tells of how her students um, started, not knowing how to sew. They grew in their confidence and she says, um, less fearful of getting stuck by the needle and more willing to focus on the process. And that's what um, we as art teachers really want to do is cut like cut down their self-consciousness, um, you know, boost their confidence in themselves. They can do it, they're artists and just express yourself. <clears throat> in a completely different um, article, um, uh, Mackle writes about her experience teaching in um, film photography. Um, she titles her class photography. Oh wait, she titles her class photographic treasures in the city. Um, and honestly, what she does with her class is awesome. Basically, she sets up this um, like this concept um, activity. Activity. She sets up this activity that um, gets them to notice things, uses their eyes so they can see things, and um, gets them to really look uh, in, in, into their surroundings. She adds, these details can be the way um, the light hits the size of the person's face, a pop of colour in a drab landscape, or the shape made by two trees. Um, <laughs> her aim is like purely for her class to see small details um, and capturing that, that moment. Um, her class focuses on the idea of treasures created a photo hunt for her students to find inspiration. Of course there was no literal treasure, but instead she says that um, some of her best, like some of the best work from her class happened due to this um, various activity and she wishes that <laughs> she did less restrictive assignments more frequently. Uh, it's always the case, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's always the case. Um, she said her class experience with, with this detail produced some of the best work that was, ever was created. It's, it's amazing what students can do when you get them to focus on the details. And it just really shows the power of activities in the classroom. Another example and the last example I'll mention um, was the idea of tape sculptures, which sounds awesome. And from the photos that I've seen online, and yes, Google them, I will I will include all my references in the description, so check them out because honestly, they are the awesomest sculptures ever. Zula um, calls this unit reimagining and re-imaging the everyday, adding that throughout the process, students have become more adept with the material. They have come to know tape. What does this look like? Um, is the question that she asks. Um, and it's a very important question to incorporate the visual art classroom. Uh, focusing on the art, making, uh, focusing on the art making process, um, getting the students to get to know the material, um, I don't know, sort of becoming one with it. Um, Dula writes from this form of art is about all the making, like all the art material expression, the um, artistic finished and resolved works look very time consuming and I suppose that's probably one of the hardest things about about it. Um, Zula states that um, students have, re have redefined their ability to make casting delicate open fingers instead of bulky closed forms. Um, Zula adds at the end of her art making process the students were very familiar uh, with the medium that they were using which is um, again something that um, as art teachers, we really need to instill in our students um, getting close with a form, you know, understanding um, the difference between oil and acrylic paint, um, understanding how to mould clay, understanding how to take photos, uh, the difference between film and digital photography. It's, it's that next level of understanding, um, and obviously. Tape can still be, uh, you know, tape can still be something that you can express um, through art. Um, in, uh, in fact, the process of using these everyday goods creates a sense of um, understanding within students. Um, he, she, like, 
yeah, she continues to um, add that um, the use of tape in their um, art making process really cut down on the use of tape in everyday life. In fact, it kind of um, got them to think about how much they were using. Um, and in fact, it created less waste in their classroom and everyday life, which is awesome. Um, it's like a, an activity to, to get them to understand something that you didn't, you weren't really expecting them to find. Of course, this is just one aspect of, of like a shifting focus from traditional paintings to marble sculptures to ghostly drawings of pencils, clocks, chairs, and desks. So as you can see, um, this article is all about the various teachers and how they have applicated um, the art making and practice into their classroom and how they have like sought different ways of um, communicating that with their students. Um, <clears throat> of course, the majority of these um, examples fall grades that are much lower than stage six, um, some four, some year fives. This is completely normal. Um, and I feel like you could completely apply that to stage six. All you need to do is simply make it more complex, as much of an oxymoron as it is. Simply make it complex. Um, this also complies to the uh, preliminary, year 11 preliminary course for visual arts, especially the practice, um, exploring the practice um, in art making and also exploring the roles and relationships between concepts of artists, artists and the world and audience. And that's what you want to do in art, according to the syllabus. Anyway, so yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a massive thumbs up. Massive thumbs up. Um, if you want to see more of these, please click, click subscribe. Um, I know that I'm going to be making one next week on motivation. And of course you want to see that. Um, it's really good. If you want to see a video on motivation, definitely watch next week. Anyway, see ya. Bye.